Good Monday afternoon, everybody. I would like to go ahead and continue our discussion with the Law of Signs. So on Wednesday of last week, if you recall, we introduced a general oblique triangle. So remember, this is for non-right triangles, where none of these angles are 90 degrees. Then you can use the Law of Signs, given in the equivalence relation here, if you fit into one of these three cases. So as we were working through examples, we were solving triangles. The first thing that I would do is identify the case. Once we knew the case, we could justify the use of Law of Signs. Then we would use the Law of Signs to fill in either the missing angles or the missing sides. So we looked at a couple of examples again on Wednesday. I would like to continue looking at examples. Um, we'll do a couple of special cases today. So let's just jump right in and remember the directions. Solve the triangle. And in this case, we're calling it the ABC triangle. So triangle ABC, where we know for this example, alpha is 50 degrees, A is 9 units, and C is 11 units. So as we did before, let's first start by drawing the triangle. Now remember, when I draw this triangle, it is probably not going to be drawn to scale. So I will almost always draw this generic picture, fill in the pieces we have, but keep in mind it might not be scaled correctly. So here's my picture. Let's put A. Alpha, we said, was 50 degrees. And then remember, directly across from alpha is little a, which is 9. Then we have b, beta, we don't know. We'll find that, and little b. So it looks like so far we will need b and beta in our list. Then we don't know gamma, so that's the third thing we'll find. But we do know little c. So there's our label, our labeled triangle, and here are the components that we will fill out. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's identify the case. So here was what I think I called step one, draw and label triangle. Step two is to identify which case we are in out of these three, if we fit into one of these three. So notice in this triangle, it looks like we have a side and then the subsequent side followed by an angle. So in this case, we are in side, side, angle. So that tells me I am justified in using the law of sines. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on the calculations to find these missing components. Notice this is different than our previous examples because I was given two sides rather than in previous examples two angles. So I can't simply find the other angle right off the bat because both of these are unknown. So we'll have to take a slightly different approach for this problem. So just to reiterate, Maybe I'll go ahead and quickly re-sketch the triangle. So it looks something like this. 50, 9, gamma, C, beta, and little b. So we're looking for b, beta, and gamma. OK. So in this case, let's see what makes sense to do first. So. I would like to know B. I could go try to find B. Um, we can do that by using our relation B and beta and then alpha and A. But the problem is we don't know either of these. So I can't find B first because I don't know beta. So that tells me let's maybe try to move on to find say gamma first. So let's find gamma first. Now remember I had mentioned you can use the law of cosines flipped upside down. So instead of having C on top, let's put gamma on top because I always want the variable in the numerator. So one of the 
ratios that I'm going to use is sine of gamma over C, and then use the information you were provided, alpha and A, sine of alpha over A. So I like to start with the gene generic formula, then we can go ahead and fill in the pieces. So sine of gamma, remember gamma is what I'm trying to find, C was given in the problem as 11, is equal to sine of alpha was given in the problem as 50 degrees over A, which was 9. So my job is to isolate the component that contains gamma. So what we will do is multiply the 11 to the other side. 11 sine of 50 degrees over 9. Plug this into your calculator. Make sure that you are in degree mode. Otherwise, your answer will not be correct. So check that your calculator is in degree mode. So on the left-hand side, I still have sine of gamma. Now remember, it truly is the sine of gamma. All we did was multiply the 11 over. So continue writing the SIN out in front. Then go ahead and write in the decimal for this which was 0 0.9363. Now remember, what we really want is gamma. So to undo the sine function, take sine inverse of both sides. And at some point, oops, let's do this right here. We have sine inverse of 0 0.9363. So again, we've seen inverses show up quite often. Here is yet one more place where you need a sine inverse. Remember, you're trying to find the angle, so you have to undo the sine function. So plugging that into your calculator yields an approximate angle of 69.4 degrees. So I now know that gamma is 69.4 approximately. So we're one step closer. Notice now, here, let's go ahead and pull this down. Notice now what we need are uh, one more side and one more angle. So one thing that I would probably suggest in terms of points is go ahead and complete the other angle. You have two angles. You can pick up the third angle by just doing subtraction. Remember, the total angles should be 180. So now if I take my known alpha, the gamma I just found, and subtract them from 180, I'll get beta. So for the next calculation, we find beta. Beta is equal to 180 minus alpha minus gamma. And because we approximated gamma, technically we approximated beta. So that beta is approximately equal to 60.6 degrees. So that's another part of the summary. Therefore, last, we need to find B. Well, we can finally find B because I know beta. So the idea is you can't find the angle I'm sorry, you can't find the side unless you know the angle or vice versa. So in this case, variable on top, B, sine of beta, and then use the information that was originally provided in the problem, so A and alpha. Go ahead and substitute. So B is what we're looking for. Beta is what we found in the previous step. A was given in the problem, as was alpha. So solve for B by multiplying the sine of 60.6 .6 degrees to the other side. So that's just multiplication. From here, you can plug all of that into your calculator, and at some point you will round round according to the directions here. In this example, we rounded to the nearest tenth. And there you have it.
So our little summary for this problem was gamma was approximately 69.4 degrees, beta was approximately 60.6 .6 degrees, and V was approximately 10.2. And we have now found all of the missing pieces, and there's your final solution. So in the next video, I will show you an extreme example and kind of a warning for things that can potentially happen with these triangles.